Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon uh, of Magnetic Service. You study air, the fourth element. Here's another element which seems to be invisible. You can see it clearly. The wind carries it. It is the wind. But in general, it is something that is precious to you. You need it for life. Even more than water. You need it constantly, every moment. And there's an alliance in air with Gaia. If you would look at the metaphor in the human body, what would air be to you in this esoteric metaphor? Let's call it your silent life friend. Something that is invisible, something you take for granted, something you need every moment of every day. And when it's gone, you're aware of it. And you cannot survive. My partner today speaks of things that are hidden. They are hidden in history. And the more you learn about them, the more you know about the magnificence of not only yourselves, but of your ancestry. We told you that on this planet today, that the wisdom keepers, which I will say are the ancients with a capital A, they have that which is missing in the Western world. They carry the wisdom from the past. And the indigenous know it. And that is why the indigenous honor the ancestors, listen to the ancestors, and have stories passed down from them that they continue to teach to their children. It's a wise, wise culture that will take the ancients and make it a part of the teaching of the little ones. And that is not what you've done. What if you could extend this? Who were the ancients before the ancients? And that is the study of the stars. The ones in the galaxy before you. Is it possible that their wisdom is also in you? And then you'd have to ask the question, well, where did you really come from? Is it possible that you, as a human soul, are an extension of what has been before Earth had life. And if that's the case, do you have wisdom beyond the planet that you could pull in and help what's going on now? That invisible friend called air is the ancient wisdom you carry. What if you could pull upon this right now I would like to tell you something, dear ones, many in this room have. The ones listening to this in the future will begin this. The very wisdom that I am talking about, this invisible friend you have, is yourself in your own Akash. That combined with what you would call the creative source is the secret for peace on earth you are starting to discover energy beyond that which you would say is the energy you would need to live. This is energy within the human body. These are specific energies that have always been here for your humanness and the biology that you had before you ever came here. If I told you that the energies of the creative source and your body were the same for other life forms all over this galaxy, would you question that? Would you say, well, the other life forms probably were not humanoid. Yes, they were. Other life forms were probably not like us. Yes, they were. And we'll say it again. When you meet them someday, they may look a lot like you. What did you learn that was not from Earth 
that you pull in right now in your Akash and you intuitively are awakening to something that's from the stars. Now, what would that look like? I'll tell you. The astrologers are awakening to quantum astrology. The homeopathists are awakening to esoteric multidimensional homeopathy, energies beyond what they thought. Some of the most ancient and understood known facilitations are starting to have multidimensional attributes. That is an awakening from the stars. You didn't have it until now and your Akash is starting to give it to you. This is your best friend. Air is so interesting. Did you know that right now this particular group where you are on the planet is one of the freshest places you can be with the purest air you could have. The reason? You study in school photosynthesis. You understand the air and carbon dioxide exchange. You understand that Gaia, the trees, are giving you the oxygen that you need for life. You understand that you give them back something they need. But did anyone ever tell you where most of the oxygen on the planet is produced. And if you would say, well, it has to be the forests, you'd be wrong. They're the smallest things that exist, the lichen. All of the moss, the rainforests, they are producing more oxygen than the trees. Therefore, you are in the right place at the right time to go outside while you can and breathe some of the purest oxygen that is being manufactured by your best friend, Gaia. You have another best friend in this metaphor, and it is your Akash. It is giving you the life force that will create something very special on this planet. New information for new health using the energy meridians of the body and so much more. So much more energy of the human body will be the secret for longevity and healing someday more than anything that you have today dear ones there is so much more than you recognize within yourselves that you've never been taught I want you to leave this place thinking about this Surrounding you right now, multicolored universe of energies that have your name on it, that walk with you in that which you call your Merkaba, carried partially by you, your biology, your DNA, and even your soul, all mixed together to be something divine beyond that which re reality which you understand and is the absolute secret of health and life. This is why, as you discover these things in the future, you won't overpopulate yourselves. You'll have wisdom to know what, what works and what does not. A whole different way of producing food, electricity, and water. A new paradigm of living for the planet will wipe out all of the fears that you currently have in 3D. You don't know what you don't know. <laughs> if you can hold this vision and think positively, this positive feeling will carry over even into your next life. And when you're born, your Akash will ring with it that there's hope, you're here for a reason, and you don't have to suffer. The new generation on this planet is the key. To everything that's going to take place and as time goes on you will be the new generation think of it and so it is greetings dear ones I'm cryon 
of magnetic service. There are so many lessons that human beings could learn that are so beautiful and benevolent and awakening. And they are unique to each of you. Those here in the room, those listening later. They must be learned in a way that is appropriate for each and every life. There is no one grand lesson that everyone has to gather around and learn together. Instead, what happens is groups participate in energies that they start to recognize. And it's not the facts of what you learn, and it's not the list that you might write down. What you sense that puts you together into a cohesive unit is the attributes of love. And you feel safe and you recognize it. And that is the communication between light workers. Not that which you would call a belief system. I would like to say to stop calling it a system. Is love a system? And the answer is no. Is compassion a system? And the answer is no. Then your relationship to the Creator is not a system. It just is. But others will recognize the same energy that you do. Not in a system, but in that compassionate energy that surrounds all of you and makes you a better person because you are compassionate and loving to yourself than to others. It changes all of the attributes of your expectations, but it's got to start at home. It has to start that place that you call you. And you've heard it over and over, forgiveness of self. It's not really forgiveness, it's an awareness of who you are and what you may not have to forgive. It's an awareness, again, of being born magnificent and no matter who you thought you were, that that is, that is who you were as a child. That's what the child thought until they grew up and, and understood everything about compassion and love. The God that created you is you. I'll say it again, made in his image is a phrase that so many have used in the path, in the past to, to describe the divinity in a human being. And the image is not the image of a prophet or the image of, of the face of God, it's the image of compassion. It is love. Made in his image means you are a piece of the creator. The image of the creator is inside you. That's magnificent. That's the engine that you start to use to create whatever it is you need right now. Solution to the problem you came with today? The engine is there. Solution to the health issues you have? The engine is there. We told you the last time we met, how are you going to instruct the engine to then drive forward and eliminate these things that you don't necessarily need to have that are inappropriate to your life at this time, dear light worker. Do you feel that your life is limited? Do you feel that perhaps it's going to be over soon? I will tell you that all of that thinking was placed upon you in an older energy, in a three-dimensional place, and somehow, some way, you have believed it to this minute. Not understanding that made in his image means that you have control over the length of time you stay. And that nothing that is going on right now in your life is forever. 
that it can be moved aside today, tomorrow. You don't know what you don't know. And what you don't know is how powerful you are. The power is for you to change you. You're on the water, dear ones. This is the time. I'm going to give you some things you didn't really think about. There were a few astronauts a couple of decades ago that completely went out of the Earth's field of gravitation and there were only a few. And these are the ones that flew to the moon. It doesn't matter whether they landed there or not, they were out of touch with anything that would ground them to the planet for a couple of weeks. And they never ever got grounded. They never went to a port. And the fact that they were completely and totally outside of the Earth's magnetic field was significant. They were ungrounded, totally and completely. Now I want you to study a little bit of what happened to those men. One of them became an artist, another a poet, another spiritually minded to the max. It's all he wanted to talk about. Others didn't talk about what happened to them because they were very private. But they were so private they didn't even want to talk about the trip because each single one of them had an epiphany that they never expected. These are scientists and pilots and astronauts that were chosen from the finest ones, the logical ones, and they all were affected. For a few days, you get to be ungrounded. And I'll tell you that the energy in this place is ripe for change, discovery, decisions, solutions. I'll say it again, change, discovery, and solutions. Take advantage of it or not, that is free choice. I speak to the small group here and those listening in the future know this, that when you take these journeys where you're over and on the water for lengths of time, that these create wonderful creative times. And we've said it before, those who want to write books, take a cruise. Those who want to write poetry, take a cruise. Those who want to have solutions in their life that they cannot seem to grasp, take a cruise. It's almost an invitation for you to think differently. Accomplish things you, you might not have otherwise. And then when you return to the grounding, it all starts to make sense. And you look backwards to only perhaps a week or two before and say, I never thought of that. I feel different now. And it wasn't because it was a vacation, dear ones any more than the astronauts took a vacation. <laughs> it was something else. You with you, some of the greatest tools you can have. And so it is.